you've got your business idea. You've been working hard as a side hustle. You've been growing it. You've been developing it. You've got clients. They like what you do. You've made money. You've made progress. Now it's time to ditch the job and go all in. The extraordinary belongs to those that create it. Rebelling against business plans and debt, rebelling against what society expects of us to build cool businesses, make money, have fun and do good. Let's create something extraordinary together. Welcome to The Rebel Entrepreneur. Welcome to season four of the coaching series. Who knew I would ever get to season four when I started this with Christina in season one? And guess who's back for season four? It's me, everybody. Christina. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back. (laughs) It's like we're back to where we started. I love this. But Christina, at the end of season one, you'd pulled the plug, you'd quit, and you were going full time. That's exciting. It is. There's a lot of time passed for the audience. But for us, there's only been about a month passed, hasn't there? Yeah, a month since we talked, and I would say only two weeks since I actually had my last day. So you've had two weeks of running your business full time. Tell me what's happened, what's been going on, where are you, what's going? So it's been a little bit wonky these two weeks, (laughs) because you know you think, oh, I'm just going to stop doing my nine to five job and then launch in full time, but I actually talk to you a little bit about this, but I picked up weird little project where I'm opening a coffee shop. And by opening, I mean, I'm designing and consulting the program and getting it up and running. And then after that, I'm pretty hands off, but I, I'll make a percentage, which is nice. That's amazing. Yeah. And everyone that knows me knows I love coffee. So it was just kind of something fun that came up and I wanted to do. But the bulk of that time has been over the last couple of weeks, getting it set up. We're actually opening this week. And then, you know, I won't have to really do much except fiddle here and there. So the last couple of weeks has been a little unusual. This does bring up a really interesting point because lots of times in an entrepreneur's career, you have a choice and your choice is, do I want to get paid up front or do I want a percentage of the rear end? That sounds wrong, but you know what I mean? The profits that come afterwards. And the classic example of that is the guy who came up with Star Wars He took less money up front, but kept the rights to the toys, which turned out to be a very wise move and made him mega, mega millions over the years with the rights to the toys. But it's quite interesting. What made you choose to do all of that work for a percentage of the profits? So I am getting a small amount up front, plus labor for any time I'm actually on site. So that's nice. But when he came to me, he offered the percentage off the bat because he didn't have a ton of money to pay what my consulting fees would normally be up front. I actually get the percentage that I would want either way, plus a small upfront fee. Is he a friend already? We already have a good working relationship. I love that. I think that's excellent. For the audience that are listening, I think that's worth hearing because this guy's setting up his business He didn't have the money for the upfront costs, but he did a deal with someone to be able to get the work done and then offered the profits afterwards. And you're willing to risk your time for a percentage of the profits, and he's willing to risk a percentage of the profits because he knows you do a good job. That's a really interesting way to do business. Really interesting way to do business. It's a case where this is a venue that's in a hotel, so there's built-in clientele. So I'm not too worried about the risk for myself being that large. The real risk is you've done two weeks work and you lose it all, which is very important. But considering you could have risked your house or a bunch of money or debt or all sorts of stuff, time is is something we can learn from as well. So even if we risk time and it goes wrong, there's always something we can learn. So your main risk is these upfront two weeks work, which then you've got some top up bits afterwards. What made you say yes? kind of something I've always played around with in my head is doing a coffee shop. And I really enjoy coffee. I'm doing kind of this Art Nouveau goth coffee vibe. And we talked about doing it before, and it didn't really come to fruition. So then when he came to me and said, hey, remember that thing we talked about? I might have an opening. I was was like, oh, this is a fun way to 
do a fun little concept and have very little kind of invested into it. Are you a co-owner of the business or are you just a percentage of the profits? How did that set up? So he owns his, he has a separate business that does like the restaurant and the food there, but the coffee shop itself, I am the majority owner of the concept to say we want to license it or someone says, Oh, this is great. I'd love to purchase the concept and open another standalone. And then I also own the intellectual property because I had it commissioned and created. One of the things to consider when you do deals like this is if it is a percentage of the profits and you're owning a percentage of the company, you're taking on a percentage of the risk. And if the company doesn't do well, then you're on the line for it as well. And that's definitely something I think about. What's the risk I'm taking here and what could potentially go wrong? Because it's always worth thinking about that before you dive into the deal. And we are at Rebel Business School just about to take a permanent building. There's a big risk there. You're signing a contract with a lease and they want the money for X number of years, no matter what. So even if you don't make any money out of the building, you've still got to pay it. That's a huge risk. And the only reason I'm even remotely comfortable doing it is because my business has been going nine years and I've got a fairly good proven track record of bringing in X amount of money. And I also did the sums. If we make nothing, I know I am on the line for X pounds. Can I afford to give away X pounds? If it all goes completely wrong, am I happy losing that amount of money? And the answer was, not really, but I'd still be okay. The business would still be okay. Like everything would still be okay. And I don't think that'll happen, but I've thought about the worst case scenario going in. So how much time have you been spending on your own stuff rather than just building a coffee shop? Has that been put on hold? No, it's it's been a fair amount because I actually, right before my final day at the old job, I picked up a client and it kind of took them a week or so to sign the contract and send me my deposit. It kind of timed out pretty well that they finally paid me right when I kind of had an open schedule. But I have quite a bit of work I'm doing for them, a pretty intensive photo and video package, as well as a total website redesign. Wow. That's cool. Where did that piece of business come from? So it actually came from this girl that I've worked with before. She handles social media, primarily Instagram, but she does a lot of social media for businesses. And we've talked about working together and doing, you know, offering something that's kind of like a monthly retainer and she handles her social and I will do, you know, shoot new images for them on a monthly basis. It's not ever really panned out how we imagined. We also put this, (laughs) we also put this plan together and started pitching clients and signing them right before COVID. And then everyone freaked out and, you know, because they had to close. But since then, she will bring me people. So this is someone that she's been working with pretty heavily. She was like, we need this and this and this. Can you do it? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me give you the price. Yeah. So, so she brings me, she'll bring me people. Which we kind of spoke about episode four of that season one, we were talking about hunting and farming, where you've got the sort of work you go out and cold try and get, and then the farming is the existing clients, the people you know. I guess this is a subcategory of that. It's like a business that you know that doesn't do what you do, but you partner very well together. And we had an example of that on the pop-up business schools with weddings. I remember one particular pop-up business school. There was someone who did wedding cakes. There was a wedding photographer and there was a lady that did singing at weddings. And my thought was, you three should partner. Like you don't have to partner in terms of building a business together, but partner in terms of marketing and sales. Why don't you try and sell them the photographer and the singing? And if the singing wins a wedding, they sell them the cake and the other bits. And then you all grow together. And that can be an interesting strategy for growing your business. So I guess my question to you, Christina, is What kind of complementary businesses that you know or don't know yet could you partner with and get to know to do that kind of thing? Because it seems to be working for you. I mean, obviously, an obvious one is anyone that handles social media, you know, that needs lots of imagery. Because one of the things I've been kind of learning about recently, and mind you, I'm kind of glad that I learned this before, one of these big companies that I've been reaching out to booked me. I've been learning about like that commercial photography licensing, which I never did licensing agreement on my images. So it means I should be charging a lot more. But you know, when I'm working with those bigger companies, I think 
it could work to work with a production designer in some cases, even someone that's has more of a marketing and ad background. If they're putting together a campaign, then they need someone to actually create the visuals. I love that. So for the people listening to this, the question I have for all of you, and we're working through with Christina right now, is what businesses sell to the same clients as yours that you might be able to work with, where you find a client, they could help, they find a client, you could help. The general thought here is people see business as a zero-sum game. What I mean by that is for me to get ahead, you have to lose. I win a piece of business, everyone else loses. But actually what we've discovered over the years is if we all work together, we actually get further. So if Christina wins a client for imagery and then she brings someone in to do production design or the social media stuff and they do the same and the client wins because they get a better job, like it grows everyone's business, the clients, yours, all these subsidiary companies, everyone wins. And I think that's a completely different way to look at it. So the question for you listening is, who could you talk to that has the same customers as you? but doesn't do exactly what you do, you know, a complimentary thing. And we've got a few there. And actually, whilst Christina was saying this, something interesting happened in my mind. When she said social media people that use imagery, what do you think happened in my mind, Christina? I don't know. It was actually, oh, I know someone called Elena, who is an expert in Pinterest. And that is heavily image based. But I've been thinking about inviting her on to do a Pinterest masterclass on the podcast. So she's in my mind. And when you said that, it's like, oh, I should introduce you. I would love to hear her masterclass because I know it's a big part of some companies' marketing. I wouldn't know how to utilize it. So it would be interesting to hear. Yeah, it'd be really interesting to hear. So there's several points here. One is the specificity with which Christina said, I want to work with people who run social media campaigns that are image heavy. That allowed me to go... I know someone, actually, I know two people that I should introduce you to for that. If she did not say this is exactly who I want to speak to, I would not have been able to rifle through the database of people in my head and come forward with, here's who you should speak to. Does that make sense, Christina? It does. And it's interesting because I've always found myself having a tough time being specific, but you fear if you go and be specific or find a niche, then you're excluding things that could be business or could be good for you. The reality is, is that you could just have more specifics or you could say, well, that didn't work. I was wrong and choose a new specific instead of just being super general and never getting anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Which this was exactly my fear when I started as well. I started and people, I said to people, I do training courses and they were like, who do you do training courses for? And if I said to you, do you know anyone who needs a training course? What would your response be? For what? (laughs) It's like, I don't know. I have no idea, Alan. Shut up. What do you want to train them in? Yeah. And it just like, okay, so if you say to people, I do imagery, do you know anyone who needs images? What for? I don't get it. And I think everyone goes through this struggle. Pretty much every entrepreneur I've spoken to goes through this struggle of, I don't want to niche because I will miss out. Whereas actually the exact opposite is true. And it's interesting that in life in general, you get what you are afraid of. So if you are afraid of something and take action to avoid it, that is what you end up causing. And I have so many examples of that in my own life, in other people's lives. And this specific one is I'm afraid of missing out, so I will not niche. And that action of not niching causes missing out to happen. And it is fascinating how that works. Because if you tell me exactly, I need social media consultants who are image heavy, I'm like, okay, I know a couple of those. I can do that. If I tell you I run training courses for people who are interested in starting businesses, side hustles, going self-employed, making money, doing something they love, is there anyone you have in mind that would want to start a business? Does that trigger any ideas for you? You don't have to tell me who it is now. Just does that start to trigger ideas? Yes. That's the only possible answer without saying names. But that's how you get recommendations. 
if one is not specific, one cannot get recommendations because the other person goes, I don't know how to help you. And the interesting bit is 99% of people want to help you. Most of them just don't know how if you don't tell them. Let's do this now. What are the list of people that you could work with? And it'd be interesting if you're listening to this show now and want to drop Christina a message, if you know of any of these people, that would be ideal. How can people reach you, Christina? Freshprintmedia.com. So we've got social media managers, people who run channels. What other type of people could you partner with? Yeah, marketing, advertising folks, anyone that's planning their campaign but doesn't actually create visuals themselves. Which there we're going to small business owners, aren't we? Yeah, oftentimes it, it depends because that's something that depending on the business could be a, another business or it could be an in-house employee of the target company. So it could be a marketing firm, it could be a PR firm, which if we're getting really specific, it would be PR agencies for drink firms. Knowing this list of people, this is something you start to ask when you speak to friends, clients, anyone you've worked with, just in the general conversations. Oh, I'm just working on this. Do you know anyone who's in PR for drinks? Or do you know anyone who's in marketing? Or do you know any social media managers? That's who I want to speak to at the moment. And it's really interesting who you will get through doing that. What's your biggest focus for the coming weeks? Getting my marketing outreach back to being a consistent daily thing because we were working on it. I was getting pretty good. It just went in waves, but I was getting pretty good at being consistent. And then I feel like this last month or so it dropped off again. So I just want to get that back to being a habit. I love that. Yeah, it's the marketing. Let's get selling. I love this. And you've got those lists you were building I guess it's probably time to go back to all the people that you were speaking to and do the next round with them. Yeah, I could probably go back and hit the first round now, send them something new. I think reaching out to new people, reaching back out to the old ones. And the other thing I really want to do, and maybe this is something that we find someone that would be really brilliant at this, is looking at my website and saying, how do I how do I make this be very clear and easy to tell what I'm selling? And that's just something I haven't updated much. Like I've added new photos, but you know, I haven't sat down and thought out the text and said, how do I make this very clear on the homepage the moment you click on it, what I do and how to get a hold of me? So I think that's kind of something I need to sit down with it and say, what do I do and how can I make this reflect that? Well, I guess the question is, what do you want your website to do? What's the output you're looking to get? I mean, I want people, if they find it, if they're searching, you know, SEO being a whole other thing, say they find it and they're looking for, you know, food and beverage photography or cocktail styling and photography, if they find my website for it to be like, you're in the right place, contact us, let's set something up. That's the last bit is to contact us. This is the bit people think, I I want people to like my website. I want people to look at it and think they know what I do. Actually, I wouldn't care about any of that. All I care about is are people emailing me asking for my services? Like, are people contacting me? For you and your business, that's it. For other people's businesses, maybe people are buying packages online. Maybe people are buying things online. That's the outcome. For you, I think it's are they contacting me? Have you had business come through your website? No. I mean, mostly at this point, I use it as a just as an online portfolio. And lately, I've been using Instagram more than that, even. There's an interesting bit is, do we actually want to get that website to a point where it's going to drive business to you? Or do we want to focus on Instagram? Or do we just focus on the cold marketing and the website is just the place where they go and check and then they come back to you? And any of those answers are fine. SEO is a one, two, three year play. It can be shorter, and I know people who've done it in smart ways. One of the shortcuts I think that's quite interesting is Google My Business. So Google My Business is a fascinating thing where you get your pin on the map and you can have your business down for different categories, different keywords, you can develop it. Then if anyone searches Food Photographer LA, we work to get you to number one in the list. That 
depending on your type of business, can be incredibly powerful and more powerful than a website. Our accountant, Emma May of Millwood May, she did exactly that. She got on Google My Business. She set the pin. She did the keywords. She worked and filled out Google My Business completely, which how many accountants do you think actually properly fill out Google My Business? And then she asked for reviews. So she, I remember this very vividly. She emailed me and said, we've just set up this. Would you leave me a review? Now, I love what she does. She really looks after me. So I went straight there and I gave her a five-star review because I believe in her service. I put my text. I made sure that I put in accountant Wokingham as the term so that it helps her on our keywords. And we really did that. She has, I think it's 60 five-star reviews on there. And the closest accountant in Wokingham has one. She has filled it all out, done the reviews, done everything. And she's showing up top of the list. And that has been worth sometimes one to two leads a day, sometimes two to three a week. But it's been an incredible driver of business. Do you have Google My Business? I do, yeah. It's under Fresh Print Media, but I don't know if maybe if you search food photography in Los Angeles. Well, here's the interesting thing. Showing up for one's own business name, please take this in the right way, it's virtually irrelevant because you're unknown. Like when I started Pop-Up Business School, how many people do you think searched for Pop-Up Business School? Zeros and zeros. Zero, because no one cared. Who is this random Englishman? No one cares. And when I started, what I really wanted to show up for was how to start a business When you're later on in your career, you want to show up for your name as well, because people will start to search for you that way. And it's important. But early on in your career, it's a lot less important. It's actually showing up for those keywords. On the map, this is quite interesting. There's adverts. So there's Tom Kubik Photography and Space and Light Digital. They are paying to be top of the list. Then we've got Victoria Wall Harris. Vanessa Stump, Andrea Brico, Dana Hersey, Vinnie Finn. There's like a bunch of names. They've got cool names, these photographers in LA. And where is Fresh Print Media? Not there. Yeah, I mean, I maybe need to go through and make it a little more specific as far as the keywords to food or cocktail, food and beverage. Yes. Because it might just be very general photography at the moment. The fact people are paying to come at the top of these searches, what does that tell you? This is a useful tool to them. They value it enough to pay for it. Because they wouldn't be paying for it if they weren't winning business. And searching down beverage photography, I'm just going to report you're not on page one. Bummer. Bummer. (laughs) (laughs) But this is interesting. So everyone listening to this right now, think about what a client would search for you for like if they didn't know you what would they search for and then type that into google maps or into google and see what comes up if you type it into google put a location with it that's how you get the map and those pins are then the businesses but this is a really interesting way to see where your business shows up so if you've got la people searching for this like we want to be on that list There's actually a whole bit around the digital marketing for your business that we could think about. Yes, that appears clear now. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry uh, for Googling you live on the show. Oh, no, Um, it's it's good. I'm I'm pretty sure that everyone listening just stopped and Googled their business. I hope they did. And if you didn't, do it now. It's so important. Google what people would search for. I've had so many people come on the course and say, look, I show up at number one spot on Google for my business name. I then have to play the bad guy and burst their bubble and go, I'm really sorry to tell you, but that doesn't mean anything because who is searching for your name other than your mum? My mum searches for me regularly and that's it. No one else cares. What you need to search for is the product, service and location. And then we need to work to show up for those things. So the general work is let's go through your Google My Business account, set up the different items, work on the keywords, and then see if we can get some of your clients to leave you reviews using the keywords you want them to use. Sounds like we should organize a website review, Christina. Would you be up for that? Maybe I'll invite 
Henry from the pop-up team on to have a look at it with us. I would be very up for that, especially since I think when I set it up, I was more worried about looking legit, like it being a nice looking website than the content, because you you want to feel like you have a seat at the table and that you're not just playing around and you have some ugly, unsophisticated, that blocks just the whole having the correct content. And that is why me included and everyone else print business cards that say CEO or some kind of like chief executive thing right at the start. So we feel like we're legit. We should have a seat at the table. Look, I've got my business card that says CEO. I did exactly that. And actually what I've discovered over the years is whenever someone hands me a card that says CEO, my first thought is you're a one man band, as opposed to working on the business, working on the marketing, showing it like all of that stuff. That's what's going to give you credibility is the quality of your work, the clients you work with, the style of work. So I think what I would love to do with you is I will organize a review of your website with Henry from the Pop-Up Business School team. And for those of you listening, this will be a fantastic episode for you to tune in with and get Christina's website up and your website up. And the same questions and comments that Henry makes about Christina's website are going to be the same comments and questions you need to answer for your own websites. That will be a really interesting episode for all of us to tune into. And then what I would love to do as well is let's go through on our next call. If you could hold off doing your Google My Business work, let's go through it together on the call and actually work on it together, all the different elements, putting it together, because I think that'll be fascinating for the people listening to go through those steps themselves. So if your business is not on Google Maps, tune into that episode, and we will go through it with you line by line and work out what to do. And if your business is on Google Maps, tune into that episode, and we will go through line by line how you can enhance it and work to get further up the list because that is an incredibly powerful tool for anyone who has a location-based business. So if you are in a place or in a area, it is an incredibly powerful tool. It's kind of that time, Christina. I'm going to ask the question, what are you committing to do before we speak next time? I'm committing to getting my daily marketing and outreach back on a daily schedule and not touching not, not touching my Google My Business until... <laughs> Until we talk next, it's going to be impossible. It's been very hard. So when you say getting it up and running, what does that actually mean? It basically just means scheduling an hour each day where I sit down and that's all I do, which will be, you know, I have everything. I have like templates of everything already, images, but that will be going back and revisiting the older lists that haven't heard from me in a few months, the next step in the newer lists, and then also building the next list, which will tie into what we just talked about, thinking about what businesses are complementary. I love that. That is a perfect plan. For those of you who are listening, the question I've asked Christina is very important. It's the clarity of which Christina knows what she's going to do next. And for all of you listening to this, you need to do the same thing for yourself. What am I going to focus on for the next two weeks? What does that actually mean? What are the physical steps and how do I do it? And when Christina says, I'm going to go back to the first list and reconnect with them, that is a clear next action that she can literally sit down tomorrow morning and do some of. And that's so critical. The opposite is what people do when they go, I'm going to work on my website, Alan. And then website goes on their list and they never do anything because website isn't specific. Specific is I'm going to go through the text on the homepage or I'm going to update the banner on my homepage or whatever it is. But things don't get done if they're general. So if you're listening to this right now, the question is, what are you going to do over the next two weeks? And what specifically are the actions you're going to take? That makes it easy for you to follow through. And it sounds like we're on the marketing bandwagon. We're back, Christina. You're back. Well, it's actually one of those things that never ends. I was hired by one of the major tech companies to come in and do an entrepreneurial session for one of their latest products. And guess what we spent nearly the whole time talking about? Marketing. And actually what we spent time talking about was who's your audience? Niche marketing. How are you going to reach them? 
What's the specific tools you're going to use to get your product in front of them? And it's exactly the same questions. So actually, I don't really care what stage of cycle people are in. We're always going to be marketing and selling, and that's just part of a business life. Final question for you, Christina. What are you most excited about in your new full-time world of running Fresh Print Media? What's, what's got you going, I'm excited to do this? At the end of the day, just the ownership of my time. Because it's, instead of just trying to like, oh, scurry around and shove stuff in and make sure you get it done. It's like just having the ownership to sit down on a daily basis and spend your prime time, your best hours on things you want to do. and being able to choose how you lay things out and who you get to interact with and work with. I'm not afraid to cut someone out. Okay. <laughs> not, not I'd every... better keep performing then, <laughs> hadn't I? No, no. Just as far as like, you know, sometimes you work with clients, not everyone is worth it. Yes. And I think as small business owners, we kind of forget that side of things. I remember recently, it's probably a year or two ago, Henry, uh, who works at Pop-Up Business School, was saying they're going to a review meeting and they weren't looking forward to this review meeting. And I said to Henry, you do know a review meeting is two-way. You can review them as well as they can review you. And he kind of looked at me and went, you still surprise me, Alan, sometimes. And I thought, yes, thank God I still surprise him. But a review meeting is, do you enjoy working with them as much as did you get value the other way? Because it's really important. It's got to work for both parties and people forget that. As you often say, what's the point of all this if we're not having fun? <laughs> exactly. You've got to have some fun whilst you're doing it. So, Christina, do you have a closing thought for the people listening to the podcast now you're full time at this? Do you have a thought for them that you'd like to leave with them? My closing thought is that you should just get specific and take action. What seems like a small task, you have to get specific, distill it down and just do it. I don't think I could have said it better. So on that note, leave, go, just do it. Get specific, take action and just do it. You can have any life you want to. Choose to build something cool. Choose to take action. Choose to work to make your dreams become reality. Stand out, be different, be yourself, be a rebel entrepreneur.